mean, Lord, help. I mean, I'm just wondering where are we living at these days? It's like I'm living in the North Pole. I told somebody today, if the bugs don't die this year, they ain't never going to die. So uh, all the old timers used to say, you got to have one or two of these every couple of few years to for the bugs to die off. Well, I hope the bugs all die and uh, they, they get what they've been hoping for. Um, Real quick, I'll, I'll give you, um, I want to give you an update uh, just real fast on Brother Mark. I talked to Miss Sherry right before church, and she said that uh, Brother Mark's pains eased up a little bit and um, that, uh, that that seemed to subside just a little bit, so they were really proud of that. They got him up and got him walking around. Uh, he still doesn't have an appetite at all, and... Um, so um, he told the doctor last night he's ready to go home. And, um, but the doctor's saying with the pain levels, and evidently the sodium levels somehow in his body has gotten way out of whack. I, I'm imagining from, uh, I guess, all the stuff they put in him. Um, but anyway, they're trying to get that under control, but they're expecting like four to six more days before he gets to come home. And he is... Uh, he is torqued about that, to say the least. So um, he, he's ready to be back at home. So y'all, y'all just keep praying and uh, and asking God to to really give him some grace during this time, and and his wife and their whole family. Um, man, it's it's just it's a classic case of you know, is is he even said a classic case of the downfall of the fall. Just sin in general, it don't matter. It's very, uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't pick and choose, it just comes. And so it is what it is, reigns on the just and the unjust. And so y'all just keep praying and asking God to really bless that family and uh, that, that God would use this in uh, any way he can to bring him glory. Yep. No. No, no, I, I think she's going to get to go back, uh, but not right now. Uh, the way COVID is, I, I think they snuck her in over there. Yeah, so um, all that, I think, is going to come around again eventually, but uh, but y'all just keep praying, uh, praying for her. And Yes, sir. Um, I received a text today from Keith Harris. Mm-hmm. He's been here several times. Um, I woke up this morning and feel very weak. Okay, Keith Ayers, uh, Kim Davis as well. Uh, she's in the hospital. Um, she has got. Um, they thought she had a stroke. I talked to her today. She thought she had a stroke, but they ruled that out. And now they're thinking blood clots around uh, maybe her heart or her lungs. Uh, they, they're working on that now um, to try to figure out what, what's going on there. So. Um, so be praying for her. Uh, she's in the hospital. They don't really know what it is, but they did diagnose her with COVID again. Um, yeah, I mean, the what? Well, yeah. Well, I, I I don't know that you can get the the same strand um, this fast back to back. I think you can get the what we now they say is three. I think there's three strands or something like that here. So um, I think you can get that from what I understand. The, the last one's supposed to be more contagious, the deal from South Africa or whatever. So she's got COVID again, and on top of them just not really knowing what's going on. So so y'all y'all remember her if you can. And uh, then Miss Yolanda, uh, she called me right before, before church as well, and uh, she said that her brother in California – was admitted into the hospital they think he may have had a stroke and so um 
Miss Sh that's Miss Shalonda's last brother, and so uh, she is she is just all kinds of tore up about this whole deal, rightfully so. But um, but nonetheless, let's let's remember her, and then um, and then Ashley, um, Ashley and and Chloe, and Miss Diane. Uh, Y'all remember Ryder, Ashley's little boy from. How, how, how old is he? Three? Three. Um, so Ryder is in Scottish Rite. Okay, Ryder's in Scottish Rite. And he went because he was having some stomach issues two, two weeks ago now. Is that right? Two weeks ago he went because he's having some stomach issues. And anyway, they, they brought him back home. Um, and he really hadn't been right since, hadn't wanted to eat. Um, anyway, uh, fell and hit his head last night, took him back to Scottish Rite, and they think that this three-year-old little boy has Crohn's disease. And so they're going to do some more tests tomorrow on him. And so uh, just pray that they figure out what this is and they can treat it. And he's he's lost weight. Uh, I think you see he weighs less now than he did last year, right? Okay. So um, he weighs less right now than he did last year. And, and, and you know, uh, my, my boys didn't didn't uh, grow because uh, they didn't like to eat, but uh, but Sarah Jo, I think she's weighed the same for the last I don't know four years or so now, and but um, just pray you know that God would work in that little in that little dude's life and um, and obviously pray pray for the family, uh, you know I, I be rough not being able to. Just like everybody else right now, not being able to go to the hospital and, and see your grand boy and see your brother, and so uh, it, with the nature of how this family situation is right now, uh, let, let's just let's ask God to bless them and and uh, to protect him and keep him safe, and everybody involved uh, would work to make the situation as good as possible for him. All right. Um, Let's pray for Awana tonight and ask God to bless it. And I uh, think they're painting, which is much better than the whistles that they sent all of our kids home with last week. And uh, so uh, Ridge has took his to school three or four days. And um, so I'm sure the teachers love that. I thought, hey, we're getting in on it. Let, let, let the school have a little fun while we're at it. And uh, so let's pray and uh, let's ask the Lord to bless these things tonight. Uh, we ask God to really give us a, a heart for what we're going to be talking about as we wind down discipleship training. All right, Father, we we come to you and uh, Lord, we thank you for giving us a place to worship. Lord, giving us a place to come and be edified and, and built up in our faith. I pray God tonight, Lord, that you would God, that you would give us exactly what we need in individual terms. Lord, for those that will go back and listen to this later, I pray, God, that they would pray with, with me right now, God, Lord, that you would open the eyes of their understanding. And, God, that they could behold the great things that are in your law. And, God, that the Word of God would become living. And, Lord, that it would speak to them. And, Lord, it would their lives would be changed because of it. Lord, for all these prayer requests mentioned tonight, many things in many people's lives, God, many in the in the life of our church, Lord, the outside of our church, uh, Lord, people we know, people that have asked us to pray. I, I just pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, to, uh, Lord, to fervently pour these things out in our quiet time, and, and God, that we would seek you in all these, and, and God, ultimately, that the praise and the glory of of these lives that are that are having these issues would be all to you. And God, that you would in some way, as you orchestrate very well, Lord, to, uh, to bring glory to yourself through the whole thing. Lord, bless us tonight. God, give us a heart for what we're, we're going to hear tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, this is week number 20 of discipleship training. Week number 20 of discipleship training. Um, we're we're going to go back over the first page there. We're going to go back over the four goals of discipleship. And uh, now I, I, I want to make sure that, that we understand the emphasis behind the goals 
And we've, we've got to get to that place to where we understand in this church that, that everything we do with every fiber of our being, uh, of who we are, these goals are the driving force behind discipleship. Um, they're not some kind of haphazard thing. Uh, they're not something that was very had a, just a flipping approach to them when they were uh, when they were outlined. And so we've got to make sure that everything that we do, everything that we do in terms of making disciples, that we are aiming at that one thing, the goals that we have laid out before us, and we've got to make sure that we get to the place to where we can identify these as the thing that we're headed for. Um, I, I think it's real easy if we're not if we're not careful, and we've said it over and over in here, but it will it will be really easy to if we miss the goals to begin to just transfer information over, and we'll lose what what discipleship is all about. We'll take it and we'll make it information oriented, and and then when it's just information oriented, it's going to lose the one element that all of us want in our life. And that is for God to transform us. And, and I think sometimes, I mean, I, we could apply this to Bible reading. I mean, how many of us sometimes we just read our Bible just to be reading our Bible? And, and the next thing you know, man, we've gotten through a chapter and, and, and look, we're, we're to the place to where, man, I'm just doing this thing for information's sake. But we're going to have to come to discipleship with the mentality, look, this is not about a transfer of information, but about transformation. So, uh, real quick, we'll go through the goals. Goal number one, uh, it, maybe you remember it. I, I hope you do. I hope that you're going to, as we go through these, you're going to start remembering these things. And, and maybe, you know, in, in a month, in two months, three months, you know, we'll be able to ask everybody in here that, that's been a part of this thing. Man, can you quote the four can you can can you quote the four goals of discipleship? And maybe that that's something you know in a, in a month or or maybe you know them now. But I, I hope you get to the place to where you do know them and you understand them by heart. And that way, when you start every single lesson or every time you meet with somebody, you analyze in your heart and your mind: are, is the are we are we working towards the goals right now? Does that make sense? All right. So goal number one: establish your disciple in a meaningful relationship with God. And uh, it, it, how does God talk to us? Somebody tell me. Through the Word of God. And then how do we talk to God? Through prayer. So we're, 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 we're focusing as a goal to establish our disciple in a meaningful relationship with God through the Word of God and through prayer. Through the Word of God, obviously God talking to us, and through prayer, us talking to God. Goal number two, establish your disciple in a meaningful relationship with believers through biblical friendships and fellowship. Through biblical friendships and fellowships and fellowship. And then goal number three, establish your disciple in, as an active participant in the spiritual life and service of the local church. And then number four, establish your disciple as an active participant in the work of the Lord. And who remembers what the work of the Lord was? Somebody tell me what the work of the Lord was. What? All right. But what was like the the? What, does somebody anybody remember like the definition that we gave? The work of the Lord was the work that the Lord did while the Lord was here working, right? Which was making disciples. But uh, get that in your get that in your heart. You know, the work of the Lord was the work the Lord did while the Lord was here working. So, what was the what was the work of the Lord? A Jesus won people to himself. Jesus won people to himself. Jesus won people to Christ. Obviously, we understand through the 12 that he built them up in the faith. 
And then C, he sent them to win people to Christ and to build them up in the faith so that those people could win people to Christ and build them up in the faith and, and then they could send people to win people to Christ and build them up in the faith. And then so on and on and on and on. <laughs> All right, so those are the four goals of discipleship. Now, what, what are we going to do here at our church? Is, we're winding down, man, but what are we going to do? And I'm, I'm getting a little antsy as we're winding down, uh, you know, trying to make sure that, that we cross most of our T's and dot most of our I's. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it's, it's, it's probably not, it, it's not going to be as seamless as, uh, as some would probably make you think. And, and I don't want you to think it is. There will be bumps and there will be miscues and things like that. But may, maybe just a strategy for our church corporately. What, what are we going to do here corporately? What, what's, the, what's the idea for us behind discipleship? Do, do we have a strategy that we're after, a thing that we're looking to do, a thing that, that, that I can put my hands on and I can, I can see clearly where we're going? And, and the answer obviously is yes. So you'll see it, number one, challenge and equip every, uh, challenge and equip every person who knows Christ to win others to Christ. Challenge and equip every person who knows Christ to win others to Christ. Now, I, I, I'll say this, th this. This here is no small thing. Why? Because most people in most churches have never won a soul to Christ. They've never personally, now I'm not talking about here in the altars. Listen, I, I, I praise God for people that work in the altars, but I'm not talking about in the altars. Man, it's kind of like, that's like shooting fish in a barrel. You know what I mean? I mean there, it, it wouldn't matter what you said to them when you got up here. I mean, you know, most of the time people are ready to be saved when they're here. Uh, so, I, I, but I, I'm not talking about that. I, I'm saying you personally won those people to Jesus Christ, not, not here in, in our church, but, but on your own time, on your own level, at your own playing field, you, you won those people to Jesus Christ. Well, here, here's the deal. We want to make sure that every person in this church has the ability to win someone to Christ. We want to make sure that every single person is able to do that. But the, the way a lot of churches, and you'll You'll be, you'll be understanding when I tell you this, the way a lot of churches have gone in the last several decades is usually one of two ways. Usually, they're, they're, they're really big on, on the whole building part and the edification part and the teaching part, and, and they, they, they have pretty sound doctrine, and they're just, you know, they do a lot of teaching. They're, you know, they got, you know, I hate to say it like this, but they got, you know, People like that usually, churches like that usually have uh, kind of more well-to-do church people. They're usually classified as, as places that, you know, uh, I don't know, they look, look, look different than our church is what I'm trying to say. Does anybody know what I'm talking about besides me? Okay, I feel kind of weird, but uh, I, I'm not trying to burn anybody when I say that. They're, I'm not saying they're not doing a good job. I'm just saying that I would have never went into that scene at 24 years old, just busted up in there. But like all, you know, all these, you know, people are, are, you know, they're, you know, they're a little more uptown than I am, and all. all I, so I'm just not. I'm not about that. You know, what I'm what I'm trying to understand. There, there's a way that there's it seems like there's a vein that people get in, and they're real teachy. They're real. Uh, they're real pushy in that area. And then there's these others that they're all about evangelism. Their evangelism is probably not the evangelism that's found in the Bible uh, because they're all signing cards and their seats and checking boxes and, you know, if you want to go to heaven, check the box and all that kind of business. But most of the time, here's what happens that's very limited to just them bringing their lost friends to church. 
And if you've been a part of, of, of places like that in the past, you'll know they'll do big drives and, man, let's get everybody in. And, and, and uh, you know, I was reading some stuff today. It's like 60 days to East till Easter. And man, people are going all out for Easter and they're just going to have these big blowouts. And, man, they're going to see thousands saved and all this stuff. And here's the deal. We should be able to bring people to church and we should be able to see them get saved. But I, I don't think that's God's intended purpose for, for the church. I don't think God ever intended the church to be a place to where you brought people to be saved. Does that make sense? Now, that is a way to, to, to see people saved. Yeah, for sure. And praise God for, for the people that have brought other people to church. Yes, that is a way to see people saved. But the real goal of this whole thing is to equip you and I to see you and I edified to, to a place to be able to sit down with someone else and take them personally into the faith. And, and, and here's the deal. We're really going to be working hard over the course of the next several months to make sure that everybody in this room has the opportunity, if you want it, to be able to bring people to that place. Um, if, if you're not ready to do that right now, hey, th then so be it. But let's make sure that we get there because that is a huge part of the strategy behind personal discipleship. Because here's the deal. If we can find this thing, excuse me, of discipleship to this church, let's, let's just say that happens. We run through people here and then that's it. Well, everybody in the church has is, is came to a place where they're built up in the faith. But here's what happens. They're never actually sent out to do anything what they've been built up in. And so we've really got a monopoly on what we say we believe is eternal life. And man, it's just right. It's just, it's just a shame. That we, we got to get to the place to where we understand that this is a major part of our strategy. Because the thing is, it is, is they must be one to Christ. And, and, and they must be, they must be one to Christ. A lot of times it's our own fault that that they're not one to Christ. And, and, and why? Because we don't put an emphasis on that, right? We don't put an emphasis on, on how to do that. And so we're going to be really working on that. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that here in a couple of weeks. It'll be, it'll be uh, you know, a little bit different. I got some stuff I think we're going to do on Sunday. So we'll try to work through all that as it comes up. Number two, connect every person who responds to the invitation to receive Christ in one of our services to another Christian that will invest in building and ultimately sending them to win others in their sphere of influence. So the goal is to take people that, that are equipped and, and, and able to make disciples and connect them with people in our church that, that have just been newly saved and, and get those people that, that have been won to Christ in, er, with urgency, get those people to a place to where they can be hooked up with somebody and start this process of discipleship. Maybe maybe they've sat in here for six months, maybe a year, and, and they don't really know anything. They're still really just babes in Christ. And, and we're, we're going to work through getting them uh, through a process. We're going to work through getting them hooked up with somebody else. All right? Number three, number three, connect every person who is already a member at Greater Hope and, des and desires to fulfill the mission with someone who would take personally res uh, personal responsibility to build them up in their faith and be a part of sending them into their sphere of influence to be winners and builders. To be winners and builders. Now, it, I, I want to I want to kind of get you up to speed where get you where my heart is with this whole thing right here. Uh, 
you ever heard of the term, we got to big, we got to start where we are, right? You got to start where you are, okay? Where we are ain't, ain't where we would like to be, right? But we've got to start where we are. Uh, the first time I ever went to a discipleship conference in, out in uh, Cartersville, Oakland Heights, I walked in out there and I'm talking to all these guys and and those of you, yeah, there's a couple of you, you know Brian Hedges. Uh, Brian Hedges, he, he's a pastor, pastor of a church in, in, uh, in Kansas. And he comes up to me, and, and this first one I've ever been to, I don't know anything about discipleship at all. I mean, it's like four years ago. I'm just like brand new in this whole thing of, like it, I was kind of already spun out a little bit. And, um, and he said, oh, he, and he, he, he said, man, where, where are you from? And I told him it was in Dallas. He, and he said, Oh, cool. And, and he said, um, he said, well, what church are you from? And I said, well, I pastor Greater Hope Baptist Church. And he's like, oh, okay. And, and then the most sobering question to me of the day, of that day, and I, it shocked me. Like all the, I felt like all the blood left my body. And he says, well, well um, he said, so, so who, who discipled you? And I just kind of started staring at the floor. <laughs> I put my hands in my pockets. And I said, well... Nah. Oh, nah. I him hauled around. He's like, you don't know nothing about all that, do you? And I'm like, no. no. Mm -mm. And, and I thought for a second, he was going to say, well, you better go back and resign, buddy. But but he was like, well, you're in a good place. But you, And he made the statement, he said, but you got to start where you are. You, you can't remain the, the way you are. And you know, that was the day that I decided that, you know what, I, I've got to figure this thing out. And that took me a little while to get enough humility about me to say I didn't have it figured out. Um, but, but I will say this, there, there's always going to be some trial and error in working through the disciple-making process of a church that don't know jack squat about it. You understand what I'm saying when I say that? <laughs> like, like it can be uh, tricky, and only by pride comes contention, BTW. Are you, are you getting me when I say that? You can write that out there somewhere, okay? Only by pride comes contention. Because if you get prideful in the middle of this whole process about where you end up, and you become contentious, number one indicator to me, whoever it is ain't ready. And until pride is put down, then you're not ready for the process. Amen? All right? There will be people that, will be, that, that are going to be discipling and at the same time probably be discipled. Well, how does that work? Well, we'll work it out. It'll, it'll get worked out. You know, it's part of the... But here's what we got to make sure we, we do. We got to operate with urgency right now. Why? Because Jesus is coming back. That's why. And we don't got time to squabble about that. We don't got time to bicker about what we, what we do like, what we don't like about the whole... Right? We don't have time to mess around. All right? So, so we got to work through this thing the best way we can. Number four, number four, to create a culture at Greater Hope where winning, building, send, and sending not only describes what we do, but defines who we are. Man, I, I want us to get to the place to, to where everything within us is coming to a place to, to where we, we're not just here to, to see people get saved. But that people that do get saved, you, you get consumed with the fact that, man, who, who's going who's, who's gonna to disciple those people? It, you see, I, I want to be able to give the rest of my life to this one thing. Like, I, I want to give everything I got to the till, till I'm out of here, if I die or I go by way of the rapture. Man, I would really like to just give myself to this thing right here that I feel like God has laid out in His Word, and just, just let's just do this, right? Well, let's don't do nothing else. 
Let's just do this. With everything, look, man, let's just do this. And why? There again, the judgment seat is on the line. The judgment seat's on the line. That's why we just want to do this. You know, interesting deal, uh, 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 6. We've quoted it in here a few times during discipleship. Brother Dylan, uh, he, he, he preached on it several months ago on a Wednesday night. But he, he said, and, be, and, and ye became followers of us and the Lord. Having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Now, now get, get this right here. This is, this is Paul and Silas and Timothy working in this church with a group of people that became followers of Paul and Silas and Timothy in the process of discipleship in following the Lord, right? But now look, look, at, look at 1 Thessalonians, the next chapter, chapter 2, and, and verse number 14. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which are in Judea, are in Christ Jesus, for ye have also for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Now, now look at this. This is I've never seen this like this before. Became followers of the churches of God, which which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. Now look look how this goes. The church at Thessalonica looked at this other church as a model church. And the picture here is we have a church discipling another church. Like a, 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 a church discipling a, another church. And here, here why, why would I say that? Well, Obviously, the investment that Brother Mark's made in us, the, the, from, all, from, uh, from New Philly to Northwest to one, where it, it, the investment that he has made into this church is most definitely a church working to help disciple another church. But now, th there, there's so much accountability there for that, though. Why? But because we, if we can get this ingrained in us like God wants it to be, you know what? The greater hope may, may become a model for some dude struggling down the road that is beating his head against the wall Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, unfulfilled, mad, I'm talking about just ready to throw in the towel and looking for something real. He may just say, hey, dude, I don't know what them dudes over there. You know, he, 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 he may just say, hey, you think you could help us? And wouldn't it be cool if we in, in three or four years, we had this thing in our, in our spirit so much so that there would be other people in this county, there would be other people maybe in another state, there, there's, that they would see that and say, you know what? Let's get on. Let's get on board with this thing. Why? Because, because they're doing something that that we feel like God is going to bless. We think about Malawi, and and you think about these American dudes, and they're going over there and they're training hundreds of pastors every time they go. And, and most of them, most of them, they don't pastor churches twenty, twenty five, but twenty. You know, 25 times 500, that's a lot of people. The reason most of those people in, in those villages uh, are pastors is because usually they're the most literate of the, of the group, of, of the village. And, and so they've got, they, they've got a little bit of literacy to them. And, and so uh, Brother Mark and, and, and Palera and Saul, they work extremely hard to try to teach these guys every single week. Every single week, try to teach these guys the, the biblical hermeneutic to studying, uh, to work through the Bible, biblical principles on how to rightly divide the Bible, 
And, and, and here, here's how this whole thing goes. In Malawi, they're still looking to make disciples the very same way that we are here. And while that's going to be really hard, Palira has worked really hard for his church to be the model church that right there in Malawi that they can pattern other churches after, that these guys in villages can come in and see this work that they're doing and say, oh, man, it is doable. Man, we can do this thing. It's not a washout. We don't have to do it like the world says do it. How many of you understand the world has really formed what we know church to be versus what the Bible called church to be? Like, like the seeker-friendly movement, man, that's one of the most damnable things that's ever hit America. Let's gather 1,500, 5,000, 10,000 people together, house them all up in one room for once a week, and then send them on about their merry way. But we're going to make sure we collect all their money. We're going to build really nice things. We're going to go way into debt. It, it, you, understand, you understand how this whole thing shakes out? So it, it, it is damnable, man. It is, it is horrible. But what we've got to make sure that we do here, we've got to understand that if we look at America, the thing about America, most of us, we're, we, we don't have the issue that they have with literacy. We're, we're not necessarily illiterate, but we do have a problem. Our problem is we've got better things to do. Our problem is we've got things that are more important to do. Our problem is we don't have time to do that one thing. Because why? But, but you're asking me for this one-on-one -on -one junk. Why not one-on-five? Why not one-on-ten? Well, this is the way we feel God's called us to do it. And so this is how we're going to do it. But, well, I got better things to do. Oh, okay, you go do that. You go do that. And, and that's okay. But we're going to do this, right? No, number five, corporately, we want to work through such a big undertaking as discipleship is as much as will allow for discipling relationships to be connected to and through fellowship groups. Now, we're going to restructure and repurpose our fellowship groups. Uh, they're going to be restructured and repurposed in such a way to where we can use them the best way possible to facilitate us maintaining relationships, staying connected with our church family, and obviously trying to reach people at the same time with these fellowship groups. They're not going to look like they do right now. They're not going to be at the same time as they are right now. And, and we're going to work all that out. That, that'll, be, <coughs> that'll be part of the process that we'll have to work through. Uh, and, and how soon will all that happen? Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm not real sure about that either. But it's going to be a process. But I, I would ask you, if you've got concerns, make sure you pray. And, and you, you pray and help us that, that we make the right moves seek the Lord, that we make the right decisions, that they're wise decisions. And, and again, only by pride comes contention. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. When you start getting offended about stuff like that, man, maybe you ought to just find yourself a corner somewhere. Because nobody's doing anything intentionally here to try to disrupt the little bubble that we've created. All right? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, strategy. Strategy for, for you personally. We, we deal with the church corporately, but then strategy for you personally. Number one, this is what I am praying for, for God to use you to personally win someone to Christ. For God to use you to personally win someone to Christ. There, there's a little there's a little devotional devotion inspiration slash inspirational 
application to Job 26. Anybody ever read Job 20, the five questions in Job 26? So we'll go over them one of these days, but they're just you know inspirational slash devotional application here. The, the very first thing that, that God asked Job, he says, who is here because of you? And, and I don't know about you, man. But I, I wonder is the is the millions that have been saved. Is we're all gathered. I think about it like a grandstand type deal. We're all in the grandstands and we're kind of peering in and, and down there down way away from us, looks like a mile away from us, there's a big bright light shining from a throne. And at the same time, when, when he opens his mouth, it's like, an, like a loudspeaker all over this grandstand stadium. And I just wonder, you know, if every person that gets up there at the judgment seat, and, and there God is running their life as it were through that fire to see what comes out on the other side is wood, hay, and stubble, or gold, silver, and precious stone. And I, I just wonder if if we'll hear what Job heard. Who is here because of me? Man, that's, that's just a big old deal, man. As a concerted effort at this church, I, I want to hear it. I want to hear them pop up all over the place. But, man, for you personally, you ought to want to hear it. You ought to want to hear somebody from the back in those grandstands say, man, I, I am. I'm here because of that. That, that lady right there. I'm here because of that man. I'm here because of them. And, and another one, I'm here because of him. I'm here because of him. I'm here because of him. Man, I, I, I think we got to get that, right? That, that, that passion for being a soul winner right now. I, I, not just right now, but you, you know the time is near him. And even as you see the day approaching, man, even as we see this day that we're seeing the rapture of the church take full flight, man, may we come to the place to where we can say, D dude, I, I want to be, I want to be standing there. And as he asked the question, who is here because of you? I want to be able to hear somebody say, man, I'm here because of him. Man, can you imagine the silence that would go across that crowd as you stood there and nobody said a word? Man, I just don't want us to go out like that. So I'm hoping that God will use you to win somebody to Jesus Christ this year. Look at a... I want us to constantly pray for open doors. I want, us to, I want us to constantly pray for open doors. Doors of utterance is what Paul prayed for. B, constantly pray for boldness with each open door. He said in Ephesians 6 and verse 19, And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to, to make known the mystery of the gospel. Man, when the door is open, we got to be bold. Pray for the doors to be open, but make sure that we understand we're going to have to have boldness. Man, can you imagine the door being open and us cowering? Us cowering as the doors are opening for us? 
C, pray for wisdom with each open door. Colossians 4 and verse 3, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make, manif make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeeming the time, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Pray for wisdom with every single open door. All right? Number two, for God to use you in building and sending each person, God uses you to win to Christ. So in the process of discipleship, we want to be able you win somebody to Christ, obviously. We want to be a you want to be in the spot to where you can be a part of winning, winning and sending those, those people that you want to Christ. Number three, for God to use you until you personally win someone to Christ, to build and send those that have been won to Christ through one of the services or ministries of greater hope. And then number four, for God to use you personally to win someone, for God to use you until you personally win someone to Christ to build and send others in our church family who desire to fulfill the mission. And until we get them, until we get all these, is we understand that this is a concerted effort corporately, but, but the corporate side of this thing is made up of individuals seeking the Lord and asking God to do these things in them personally. Um, I, I don't know about you. I don't know where you stand in, in, in you know, how you approach winning people to Christ. But we'll, we'll, like I said, we're going to work on that. We'll work through that and we'll, we'll, give some, we'll give some ideas and we'll give some strategies. Um, obviously, those of you that participated in the, Phalanx groups, uh, group training, that those are, those are, we're going to work towards incorporating them into uh, maybe some in our fellowship group. So there's a whole list of things that we're going to, we're going to work towards and, and get out the drawing board and, and see what that looks like for us as, as a church. And, and and it may not look like a church down the road, and that's okay. It may not look like the church that you it may not look any like any other church, and that's okay. But the one thing we got to do is figure out a way to win people to Jesus Christ with everything in us, with everything in us. And I hope that that'll be your prayer. I hope that you'll decide to do this thing. We got just one more week, I think. If if something don't happen, be just one more week. And uh, and we'll 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 hit it again. Maybe finish up the next week, or yeah, maybe finish up the next week, and then everybody a want will be off, so we'll all be in here for that the third week from uh, two weeks from now. And uh, so we'll go over some finalizing stuff on that last week, and then we'll we'll work through how we're going to do everything. We'll work through the the signing up process where you feel like you fall. Uh, where you feel like that you 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 feel like you are in terms of your spiritual walk, and uh, we'll probably go back over the uh, probably go back over the the stages of spiritual growth. Just short little overview there, but just so you can kind of see, get like a, a a refresher on that, and then maybe we'll we'll work through that and walk through it, and then and maybe maybe you know. Maybe God does something in your heart, supernatural, and, and, and we start this thing out on the right leg and we'll be able to finish it like God called us to. All right? All right. Well, let's pray and uh, we'll be dismissed. How about, how about you pray for us, Brother Sean?